Today we're going to go over mind-muscle connection. I know it's kind of like a very commonly mentioned term in, in the world of bodybuilding or just hypertrophy in general. So what is mind-muscle connection? Doesn't matter. Um, it, it's not going to matter to the extent to that like CT Fletcher's, you know, I command you to grow. Command you to grow. You must grow. I'm the boss, motherfucker. I think it's important, but it's not as important as you'll commonly hear it said to be in bodybuilding. Where it's really important is if we don't have a mind-muscle connection, it really means that we don't have the proprioceptive ability to understand where our body is in space. So if we don't understand where our body is in space, we probably can't execute a movement uh, well enough to actually put effective tension through the muscle. So we'll look at that. We'll look at some ways that we can actually get a better mind-muscle connection, so like pre-exhausting, uh, just so we can feel it. Because if we're set up, if we have a good setup for an exercise and we execute it appropriately, I honestly don't really care a whole lot whether you feel it or not. I think it is still important because if you're doing it correctly, you still should feel it. But with that being said, we're trying to talk about if you do struggle to feel it, some points to look at, and then uh, we'll look at that now. Adding in from last week, I missed this clip, so if I'm wearing a different shirt or something, ignore that. Uh, sensation isn't stimulation, so when it comes to my muscle connection, we can get into certain positions or certain exercises where we're gonna feel a muscle more, but it may actually be less stimulating. So for example, if I just sit here and do like a fucking spin press, I'm gonna feel a, a really big burn in my chest. I'm gonna feel really connected to it, but I'm not really giving a meaningful stimulus. I'm not putting tension through my pec, right? Like if I drop the plate, that's straight down, my pec does adduction. So those two things don't match. I'm not actually stimulating my pec, I just feel it. So when we get into like more shortened position exercises, so exercises that are most stimulating in the more contracted position, I'm always gonna feel it more because the EMG activity is higher but usually we're putting less tension through the short position. So if we look at research, we're gonna see that like uh, short position ex exercises are usually gonna be inferior to like mid to lengthen range in most cases. So in most cases, EMG is the highest, I feel it the most, but it's not the most stimulating. So don't get it twisted. Sensation definitely matters. Getting a feel of muscle definitely matters, but also if we don't feel something uh, and we're, we're lining up the action, so like the exercise that we're training matches the action of the muscle, we're executing it appropriately, and like we're putting attention to the muscle. Talking about our setup and our execution, so obviously we wanna be able to feel the muscle. Usually that if we can't feel the muscle, it's probably gonna be more of a byproduct of not either choosing an exercise that's actually training the muscle, so we understand the action of muscle, how to train that action, uh, two, how we set up, three, how we execute. So here, using the lats, for example, if I'm one, just throwing it around. I'm not mindful at all of the active range of motion of our lat. I probably I could feel it very well. I'm not set up well. If I'm over here and I'm rowing out, I'm probably gonna feel more like reared out upper back. So make sure that we're actually setting up. We're keeping a stable base here for the lat and we're staying within its active range of motion. Another thing is gonna be tempo. So if you have trouble feeling a muscle, talking about pre-exhausting, also tempo, so a slow tempo and pause in the contracted position. Usually the fully short position is gonna be where EMG is the highest, so we're gonna feel the muscle a little bit more. So it's not like it's more effective to necessarily stay there, but if you need to do warm-up sets there and pause in the attractive position, you're probably gonna feel a little bit better. Use that proprioceptive awareness, carry that over into your working sets so that you can feel it better, get better effective tension. One of the best ways we can get a better mind-muscle connection is gonna be pre-exhausting a muscle. So looking at what like the shortened or fully contracted position on that muscle is gonna be, and then doing an exercise where we're starting with that, we're gonna feel like more of a crampy sensation. So the bicep, a high cable curl for the pec, like a cable pec fly for the lats, like a cable pullover, pausing the contracted position, almost like getting a pump to the muscle. We can utilize that as a way of feeling it before we get into a more, uh, more loadable or more like mid-range exercise. So feel it first, under help us understand where it is in space, carry that over into like the main mid-range, main potatoes exercises. That's one of the best ways if for somebody who struggles with mind-muscle connection, other than like looking at setup, execution, exercise selection. Pre-exhausting is a great tool to use too. You can't argue with that setup, so first and foremost, make sure that your setup and execution is gonna be good. Um, do one of those tactics, so either slowing the tempo or pre-exhausting to get a feel for the muscle. Use that proprioceptive awareness, carry it over into execution. So get the proprioceptive awareness, get the quality of movement, build the skill and movement and then carry that over and actually executing and actually progressing the movement. So it's pretty simple. My muscle connection is really a product of understanding how to train a muscle and where that muscle is in space, how we can use it, and then that'll carry over nicely into actually feeling it, growing it, putting attention to it, et cetera. One more point on the whole mind muscle connection thing. If we're choosing an exercise that's more compound in nature, 
and it's gonna be less biasing towards the muscle we're trying to train, we're probably not gonna feel it super well. So like, although the lat pull down is training our lats, it's also training a lot of other muscles too. So if I'm having trouble training my lats and a lat pull down, I can look up, look at setup, execution, etc. But also maybe I should just pick an exercise that's gonna be a little bit more biasing towards my lats if I'm worried about feeling.